Harold and I had one thing in common, and now you know, we're not gay. We would talk about almost everything, as long as it was connected to women. We covered every form of women, you know, with and without. I mean, regardless, but our favorite topic was women. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, regardless. He was gifted, and, uh, and I was lucky. And that was about it. Oh, we had something very much in common. We both grew up in New York. We were about the same age. And, um, but he had more luck with women than I did because I was only married twice. Yeah, well, I had to learn the hard way. Are you Jewish as well or no? Usually, yeah. Yeah. Harold was Jewish. You'd never know it, though. I mean, he didn't... Uh, we never went to the synagogue together. We never even went separately, as far as I know. I think I've been here, been there once in the 40-odd years I've been here. I keep meaning to go, but there are other things to look at, to, 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 to do. It seems to me the only time we ever uh, connected in art was when I would ask him, hey, Harold, let me see some of your newest work. Oh, you really want to see it? Okay, come on over, I'll show you. And, and uh, he would pretty proudly point out to me uh, what was going on. I knew nothing about that. I knew about photography, a little about painting, but not into the uh, techniques he was using. My God, they were never in my mind. I couldn't figure it out. And I knew I never had the talent to even attempt it. I was attempting to learn how to just do pencil sketches. But uh, anyway, I uh, chickened out and then stayed in photography all my life and sometimes even longer. Nonetheless, I could recognize his skills. But in, as good an artist as he was, he was the kind of guy that, when you talked about Harold, you had a laugh, a smile. He, um, he had a contagious, crazy warmth about him. And if you were in the same wavelength, you felt it. You couldn't escape it. It was right there. Harold was known for some of his um, more raunchy jokes. But they were funny. Regardless of raunchy or not, they were funny. I have no intention of repeating any of the jokes here. Uh, after all, um, there's a like legacy involved, and uh, like no one's going to top Harold's sense of humor. Yeah, raunchy, but what the hell? That's the way we were, you know. And then, um, then we grew out of it. Well, he did. No, he was raunchy to the end. He was wonderful. And of course, Harold would have us in stitches about some comment or another about things like that. I really miss the hell out of the guy. Uh, I wish he wouldn't be so mean as to leave so soon. Um, I think he's still playing the joke. I mean, Harold! And so forth. I, you know, in my mind right now, I'm thinking, I wonder what his thoughts would be like if I was uh, sitting about eight feet from his beautiful daughter, being interviewed, and... Um, Oh, well, I can see exactly what he's going to say. Bill, just stick with the interview. All right, Harold, I will. Well, listen, to, if you've not met, the, and I'm sure you've met other artists, uh, unless they're married, but very often they didn't make a hell of a lot of difference. Artists, uh, well, this is a guy named Picasso, remember? <laughs> artists dwell on women. Uh, it's the woman's mind, it's her shape. It's the charms that she has that she that he can't find in other men, and so forth. So uh, he has no choice. He's stuck with women, poor guy. So uh, what is he going to do? Uh, make the best of it, and he did often. Harold would never dodge a question. If you ask him something, he would tell you. Um, and if you ask him what he thought about so and so, he would tell you. You know, he wouldn't be. Harold was never neutral. I can't picture Harold being serious with me. I can barely picture it, you know. Except when he accused me one time. You know, I told you about it yesterday. Tell me again. We were in a supermarket. <laughs> Somewhere here in town. And he comes up to me. Now the clear blue sky. I still remember it. He looks at me sort of quizzically and he says, Hey, Coleman, are you sleeping with my wife? <laughs> he then almost floored me, you know. Uh, I was going to say, well, true, but how'd you find out? 
but that I, I said something I shouldn't have said. I said, you know, accuse me of anything, but not bad taste, Harold. And that didn't go over too well. There were some things that kept me in this town. Uh, access to the New York Times, a cup of coffee, and having a, uh, a small coterie of friends such as Harold. Uh, we had a common denominator, like four or five of us would sit around a table, and if you were 10 feet away, all you would hear would be the, the rush of laughter. There was a lot of it because we enjoyed joking and, um, and making jokes out of what maybe didn't start out as a humorous thing, but we would find some humor in it. Part of the makeup of what kept me in, mentally in a good mood. I knew when I, had, when I see him, I had to be sharp. Um, Harold, uh, I never saw Harold with dull people. He um, it would have killed him. I mean, he just couldn't stand being with dull people. Paul Cutler called me up, and uh, it was a bad day. Um, at first, I thought maybe Harold had called, or somebody called Paul as arranged by Harold, a joke, you know? And uh, I could have hoping it was a joke, you know? Because he mentioned to me, I mean, a couple of weeks before, we were gonna go out to dinner and so forth, and uh, when he said when, I said, yeah, in a week or two, he said, I can't wait too long, I might not be here. I found it hard to believe for a long time, you know? Because uh, I still feel him very, I still feel his presence. Can't say anymore. You miss him a lot? Because I miss him, of course. No one but him could tolerate my jokes, and I'm the only one who could really talk. <laughs> uh, yeah.